Day 12. I'm going to use what some people consider strong language today. So uh, take a breath and in three, two, one. Okay, you should have turned off this video if you don't digest strong words. Well, this is day 12 of the appreciation calendar, the adventure into appreciation calendar. And I wonder, what does the following word remind you of immediately? What does it represent? What does it mean? Here is the word. F-U-C-K. Yes, the word fuck. Pardon the language. It just serves as a great example. But really, what do you associate with that word? What does it mean? I'm gonna draw a line, a red thread, into the week's topic, which is uh, peace. Uh, there's a very specific purpose for why I offer this word and uh, what point I'm going to make for you. I hope you have noticed this if you watched any of the previous videos. This is the uh, almost the last day. Well, it actually is. It is the last day of, uh, of the Peace Week, according to ancient Advent calendar traditions. Uh, the next seven-day cycle uh, will begin or, or will contain a period of love. We'll talk about more of that tomorrow when we light our third Sunday of Advent candle that will represent fundamentally love. But today it is still about peace. And I wonder what does the word fuck? Yes, fuck. Fuck, you know? I know it's a strong word, but it is extremely versatile, wouldn't you say? Versatile meaning that it can be used in such an amazing amount of different ways. So, for me, it can mean a trillion things. Almost, well, a trillion is a huge overstatement. It can mean perhaps, you know, five to ten different types of um, communications. And that is what I'm trying to illuminate for you today. That we have one word representing several different meanings. Now, how many words do you know in your vocabulary? If you're English speaking, I don't remember the exact number, but I think there's like 50,000 words or something. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of words. Now, how many of the words you know? How many of those do you know several definitions of? Did you, for example, know that the word nice has an origin that is extremely fascinating. Reading about its uh, history and etymology, which is the, the, the history of the word, where it comes from and how it's been traveling through time and space by the word of mouth. Um, the word nice can also mean stupid, literally, dumb, you know, it's, it can be a very derogatory word if it was used in the 1800s and before. Today, we don't use it in that same way. The point being that we have very limited knowledge about how people use the words they use. For example, let's take a trigger word of today. If someone says vaccine, I can assure you that there will be a very hard line between not only two viewpoints, many viewpoints. Just by saying that, I'm triggering a whole bunch of viewpoints. Not within everyone else necessarily, but within me first and foremost, because I have taken time to get acquainted with a numerous amount of definitions of what a vac vaccine represents. I'm not gonna talk about that here. I'm probably never gonna spend my time wasted talking about it too much. There's plenty of people who do that already. But do you see? Why do you think I'm mentioning this? How many words do you know uh, several definitions of? Now, when someone speaks, and I've, I've said a word that was extremely triggering for a certain person. This is a few months ago. Very fascinating scenario. Um, I used 
and, and this can trigger you too. So be prepared to confront yourself with why it triggers you and how you maybe can heal it if you want to. You can walk around life being triggered and feel less than good. It's perfectly fine. I can accept that people look at me, point at me and call themselves a victim because of what I've said. It doesn't really matter that much. I would prefer if people really felt really good. That's why I'm making this calendar. That's why I'm going through a whole range of emotions through one month and telling you and showing you and displaying to you the discoveries I have through this time. So let me tell you this potentially triggering story. I use the word rape. Another trigger word, right? It's, it's, I think it's even worse than the word fuck. Fuck isn't really my favorite word. It's powerful. But uh, I mean, the word rape is on a, on a ton, totally different uh, level. And I use this word actually in... Oh, I just love this because it's so controversial. And I know it's a beautiful trigger. It will have such beautiful effects on you to, to get things to work with if you get triggered. If you manage to not be triggered and you can actually accept a different viewpoint, you have come a far way and you've probably watched a lot of these videos or you already understand it. Anyway, I use the word rape in relations to forced vaccination. Oh my God. A lot of people would say, yeah, that's exactly it. If someone forces a needle through your membrane of the skin, that is rape. Other people, or at least two, or maybe more, may, probably more, three, four, five, six, I would believe at least that uh, would directly like and respond, would say that that is an absolutely ridiculous way of using the word rape. It is wrong. It is, you know, so they immediately went into judgment and felt hurt and felt uh, mistreated and felt like I, I raped the word rape, you know? <laughs> and even saying that would possibly be wrong and, uh, you know, offending to them. I know this is a Saturday. This is a darker Saturday than last Saturday, but these are so important topics. And I'm, 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 I'm speaking around a core that will help you tremendously. You're already getting it. When I speak about things, don't listen so much to my words. The words are mostly, almost, they can be irrelevant. If they are irrelevant, if you do not realize where they are spoken from, if you do not understand the underlying energy, the energy, the inner chi that is coming out of me, out of you, out of the people around you. If you can't read energy, you will hear words. And if you hear words, you will not hear reality. You will hear one of the many definitions that the person is using. And many people use the wrong definition. They can use words that aren't even the same definition in the dictionary. We all have hugely different ways of using words. The word sick, I checked it out in many dictionaries. None of them would say the slang version of sick, which means sick, bro. That's cool, man. Oh, bro, that's sick. Girl, you so sick. Yo, you look so sick, you know? It doesn't have anything to do with health. It has everything to do with coolness, you know? And that's not something you find in a regular dictionary even to this day. You have to use urban dictionary or a slang dictionary. So for a person who's 80 years of age, never having conversed with a, you know, oh, this is going to be so stereotypical to say, but a ghetto member or someone from the hood or someone like me who uses a whole bunch of different words and lang linguistic programming to trigger different sensations, to unlock the inner keys that will illuminate who you are. You know, if an 80 year, old, 80 year old person hears someone say that you're so sick or you look sick or uh, that is sick, they will think, why is it sick? And I even heard my father. My father is 88 years old this year. Isn't that beautiful? I'm 30. He's 88. My sister is 40. He's born on the 6th of December. My, I am born on the 8th of December. My sister is born on the 9th of December. Isn't that funny? 30, 88, 40. I love it. I, it's amazing. Anyway, numerology for another time. I'm very into numbers. If you want a numerological reading, contact me. Maybe I'll give it for you uh, to the price you want. Yeah. Got to do some advertising here with my crazy hair or straight out of the shower at some point. Anyway, let's dive deeper into this segment because we only have spent 10 minutes and I'm intending to speak for 400 years. 
I'm joking. So the word that triggered so many people was how I used it uh, reg in regards to rape, which was a it, it was a correct way of interpreting my use of it. I think they understood what I meant. They didn't like it at that time months ago. They did definitely not like it. But when I lis listened to their communication, it was obvious that they did not get the point of the post. The point had nothing to do with what they were writing. And they did never address the point of the post, which I think they would have agreed with. I just said, hey, human rights before forced activities. It is much more important to honor your divine freedom of right to choose than to say, hey, I know what's better for you than yourself. So I'm going to strap you down to a bed and feed you whatever I want. I think that's a less good scenario than, hey, we have information that you may or may not read. It is about something that may or may not improve your health. And if you'd like, we may or may not have a solution that we can either sell or give to you, you know, but you always have the choice. I think that's a better scenario. I think most people would say if they were talking about themselves, that they should have choice and they do have choice and you always have choice. It's never always reflected in law, but you always have it. But these beautiful people got triggered by the word rape when I said vaccinations. And that's everything they talked about. And they didn't get the red thread. They didn't get the point. So it disturbed them. They had a trigger. That's why I've been asking through this um, calendar. I think it was on day six or seven. Seven probably. Mm, yeah, five. Anyway, I said, hey. If you'd like for me to tell you about uninstalling triggers, I will. But only if you comment on any of these posts where I ask you. If you don't, I won't. That's why today it's Saturday, second, uh, actually right before the third Advent Sunday. And last Saturday I said, hey, if you'd like me to do a live stream and answer your direct questions, I will. No one responded. There's not one single person who wrote anything about that, which is perfectly fine. Maybe people don't want it, but I'm just telling you, if you watch these videos, you'll notice that I offer a lot of value. And if you, if you watch them, you probably get a lot of value from it. And you will get more value if you actually interact with what I produce. If you don't speak back, how should I know that this is of any value to anyone? I have this already. I don't need to share it. I would love to share it. I would love to live by helping people be inspired into new versions of themselves, having a solid foundation for their emotional well-being, mastering every type of thought that may arise and create an emotion so they can tune their chemical output from the brain into whatever sensory experience they'd like. I'd like for people to have that too. I don't need for people to have that, but I have that. I want to give it. I want to teach it. I want you to have it if you want it. But then I need some type of response. I need for people to actually interact. And it's even better if it's under an, a video. That's probably the only way I'm going to interact now because I don't read all my messages. I have like 100 unread messages. After I went into the Norwegian newspaper, I've been, you know, so many people, beautiful, wonderful people, fantastic messages. I'd love to read them all. You know how this is. When you have your birthday on Facebook, you probably get several messages and a lot of posts. Do you get the time to read them all? I hope you do. I, I, I intend to do, but I'm not sure if I will have the time. I know only this. I have time to make this video because it can reach many. And I will, out of curiosity, read all the comments at this point of my evolution under these videos. So if you post a comment that is comprehensible, readable, not too long, um, I will get it, you know, and I will try my best to deliver the value you seek. So back to today's point to finish that. We're going to end this video very soon. <sighs> if you have words that trigger negative emotion within you, you would be wise to heal that. Because why D does it feel good? To have an irrational emotional response that feels uncontrollable, that moves you into saying ugly things. Most people would probably say, no, I, I pr prefer to be emotionally sane, emotionally stable, <laughs> able to communicate in a, in a harmonious way, you know, to be able to um, pronounce 
the idea I'm intending to communicate in a comprehensible way. Most people would like to be good at communication because it improves every single freaking relationship you have in your life. So if you have anything that triggers you, ask yourself if you want to continue having that as a trigger, because if you do, you should continue because it's giving you something. It's giving you some type of energy generating mechanism, which is totally fine. But if you want to uninstall a trigger, ask. I will let that be one of the things I talk about next week. If you ask. So the point today, since I ask, what does the word blah, blah, blah mean to you? Here's another word. What does the word awe mean to you? A-W-E. To be in awe. As in awesome. You may pause the video here if you don't want to hear uh, what the dictionary says about this word. So the word awe, for me, is a beautiful, positive word. Out of all the definitions you could give it, there's so many good ones. And one of them is to be in awe, to be awe-inspired, you know? To feel like supreme awesomeness. To be baffled by the beauty of nature in awe, you know? A, a magnificent word. Uh, but it also means to be in fear, you know? From the root of the word awe, it has to do with you know the fear of the fear of God sometimes, or just the fear of wrath. And it's it's a word that you use to be in awe, meant to be able to stand within that pain, within that fear, within that suffering. That was to be in awe. That's what it meant in the beginning. And now it's more like to be in awe. You walk out to the view out of the mountain and you see the bird flying by and the sun peeking through the trees and the amazing beautiful landscape in front of you with the ocean and the horizon and uh, oh, just a beautiful image you you'll look at this and you'll be in awe you know so it's a very beautiful word but it has many meanings so i'm gonna land this word ship right now and um oh my god Oh, this hair probably makes people take me extremely seriously. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. self commenting The words we use have several meanings. You can choose from all the meanings that you already use, or you can interpret new meaning by learning, opening a dictionary, asking other people what they mean when they say a word, or just by creating a new meaning altogether. You can do that. I do that all the time, but it's always grounded in where it came from usually. And the reason I mentioned this type of knowledge today, the last day of peace, before we have integrated peace on a deeper level, before moving into love, um, this is based on the Christian tradition of advent calendars, by the way. Not that I'm Christian. Oh, why do I have a need to say that? <laughs> so the reason I mention this is because you will feel tremendous harmony, deeper levels of peace between you and the people around you. If you always stay humble about the fact that you do not know what you do not know. Kevin Trudeau said that. You don't know what you don't know. So be teachable, be willing to learn, and be willing to change. Don't assume that you know what the other person is saying. Spend a moment, listen to them, and ask questions until you are 100% certain about what they actually mean. That is a really huge hint on how to uninstall triggers between you and others. To communicate is a gift. If you're willing to learn about another person listening, because you have two ears and you have one mouth, so use them proportionately. Listen a little bit more in general. If you do that, if you listen to other people, ask the right questions and listen. If you ask questions that are intended to judge, that won't give you the same results as if you're asking questions intending to understand, love, and explore further. So don't assume that you know how people use their words. 
Ask them many questions until you know for certain where they stand and what they believe. And you might actually learn something about where they come from and why it also makes sense. If you do this, you have become a vibrational weightlifter, as I mentioned on day one. And you have now embraced your ability to not only raise your own vibration, but the collective vibration, because you now practice understanding. And you're bringing people back to love. Not them, you can't bring them to love, but you bring your perception of them back to love. You begin to understand the people around you and you harmoniously can have an interaction and communicate with them and accept where they stand, respect where they stand because you understand it. It doesn't mean that you um, agree with that particular way of seeing life, like that is the best way, but you can respect it, you can understand it, and you can acknowledge it and say, I acknowledge you, I can recognize where you come from, that makes sense from your perspective, and I respect that, and I honor you, and you can have whatever perspective you want because you have free will. You see how beautiful that is? Do you, and can you even imagine the type of peace you will experience in your relationships if you begin to acknowledge the other person's perspective, their point of view? Some of you don't really do that. It's time. It's time to embrace that you are the other person that you're talking to. It's your responsibility. If you'd like to have a better life, if you'd like to feel more love and understanding and peace and create a world around you that is flavored with this <laughs> wonderfulness of love, of this unwarfulness where it's safe, where you're no longer in survival mode, then you want to understand the other person and you begin to treat them with the love that you would want to be treated with yourself. Regardless of how they feel, you understand that it's theirs. It's theirs. They are another version of you, but it's theirs. It's only yours if you react to it. If you trigger, become triggered by it, then it's something you work with, right? You have to carry your own weight. If you feel it, it's yours. You can't point fingers. Every time you point a finger, three fingers are pointing right back to you. And you may think that you can point up and blame God, but hey, those three are looking at you. Correct yourself and your palm will be open and you will feed the world the most amazing substance in the world. That is love. For example, whatever you choose it to be, it's yours. You can choose whatever you want to give the world. Just make sure to give it. Good night.